I was asked recently this question, where does justice take place? In his mind, uh, justice took place in a majestic building. This is where justice takes place. He told me, well, the, and, or this machine, or in the cloud. Um, but he told me that this courthouse in Brussels is, is big, the world's largest courthouse. This is the largest courthouse in the world with the tools for, for living our lives. Uh, and no reason why it can't be a place where disputes are resolved. How do I know this is a bigger courthouse? Uh, because we have examples of lots of disputes being resolved uh, online. eBay, as many of you may know, settles, handles about 60 million disputes a year. No humans involved. Alibaba handles 100 million. American Arbitration Association, with help from an innovative company called Modria, handles 100,000. You don't have to go anywhere in large parts of the United States to resolve property tax appeals. Matterhorn Online, if any one of you are from Michigan, may have heard of this, um, this program, which uh, takes small criminal, lower level criminal matters outside of the court. Wikipedia, which we all know about, uh, has huge numbers of disputes. There are fights about such things as whether Noah's Ark is a myth or a legend, and similar important things. But Wikipedia is an innovator in that it has algorithms that somehow can pick up when disputes are occurring. Uh, sharing economy, any of you who have rented something from Airbnb uh, know the potential for dispute arising there. And massive multiplayer party online games. Massive in the sense that 20, 30 million play these games. And often they end up in, in fights. What do we learn from, from these things? Uh, I think there are three core lessons. One is uh, one that we don't think about too often, is that we're generating lots of disputes. Uh, on page one of the book, Getting to Yes, there's this line, conflict is a growth industry. That was written 25 years ago. Today, conflict is an accelerating growth industry. And uh, we don't pay much attention to it because we don't normally keep these kinds of statistics. Um, second, we need new tools to resolve these conflicts. If there are growing numbers of conflicts, we have only two choices, or three choices. One, for, don't do anything about them. Two, try to resolve them. And three, try to prevent them. And technology can help, <coughs> can help with all of these. Why is conflict a growth industry? Well, think about your interactions online. How many more transactions you take place online? How many more relationships are formed online? How sometimes these relationships are complex ones, cross-border ones. In other words, we have all the ingredients for disputes, and it doesn't really matter whether 99% of the relationship and transactions work well. 1% of a very large number is going to be a very large number. eBay has 300 million users. It doesn't matter that a small percentage of transactions there don't go well. It's still a large numbers of disputes. And why did eBay set up a dispute resolution process? Well, it understood that if it didn't resolve disputes, people weren't going to participate. So dispute resolution, dispute resolution is a process that is important not only for the disputes that get solved, but for the message that's sent. And that message is, it's safe to be here. The risk is low. Uh, and how do we interpret this? Well, we're all existing in high conflict environments. If you belong to a social network, you understand that they're frequently less than social or antisocial networks. Healthcare, large pools of disputes that are arising because of the 
use of technology. But you need companies to be on the case because every online company uh, generates issues. And how do we resolve these issues? Well, if you look at what uh, any dispute resolution process, you'll find that there are two processes involved, communicating information and processing information. I don't really care what that process is. It can be litigation with a judge, it can be mediation, it could be arbitration. Uh, there are different rules for how communication occurs, what can be communicated, what kind of expertise is needed, but the, the bare fact is that every ODR system or every ADR system or every legal system that resolves disputes communicates information and processes information. And you need both. If you don't have both, you end up with this. As President, Your Honor, I offer the entire legal history of Western civilization on CD-ROM. This is a little dated. It would be a DVD these, these days. Um, but what do I mean communication without intelligence uh, or expertise? This person is doing something that, given, uh, that's rather fantastic when you think about all those books in the law library. Um, but there are no tools to use this information. It's simply communicating something. It, there's no, it's perhaps a level of convenience, but it certainly is not any expertise uh, so you need both. Uh, you need communication and expertise. And what can machines do to bring you expertise? I'm not going to read the list at the bottom, uh, but when we work with information, uh, we can characterize that work in lots of different ways. It at least illustrates how uh, programs can be developed, not to do necessarily all of these things, uh, but to do most of these things and if not all of them together, strung along in different ways, at least some of them. We have no trouble finding information. We have no trouble communicating information. Uh, but some of these we do have uh, st are still challenges. Someone asked me how eBay resolves 60 million disputes. Uh, it actually does them in a very simple way. These are rather simple disputes. So if you have simple disputes, you can resolve them in a relatively simple way. The process eBay uses uh, are sets of forms that ask, ask users to indicate choices. And the vast majority of disputes on eBay uh, are not intentional and are not fraudulent. Uh, and that's what this set of forms is meant to, meant to do. And the end result is they resolve 80% of claims. Arbitrators and mediators uh, never really gave much uh, attention to prevention. Mediators tend to destroy all their notes after the mediation, and the process is generally secret. Arbitrations sometimes are public, often are secret. That's their, that's their value. That may be the past. Uh, if we want to know why disputes occur, uh, we need data. I think uh, in terms of future trends, uh, prevention is, is going to be an intriguing one because we've always settled disputes. Uh, we've always recognized when disputes are occurring. Um, but we don't have much history or expertise yet in preventing disputes. Uh, the kinds of disputes that I've been uh, pointing out have been mostly rather low-level and simple disputes. Um, but that that's going to change rather quickly. And I think um, uh, I would um, predict that all of these kinds of changes, basically moving from the less complex to the more complex, from online disputes alone, like the eBay ones, to offline disputes, from low value to high value, uh, those are going to occur. So ODR will prove to be a disruptive technology it fundamentally challenges the work of traditional litigators and of judges. In the long run, I expect it to become the dominant way to resolve all but the most complex and high-value disputes. Um, and I think that's, that's true. If any of you are interested in this, um, this website basically is the main website for online dispute resolution. 
and my publisher would be furious at me if I didn't take the liberty of pointing out that um, this book was just published. So forgive me for being crass. Thank you. Mm -hmm.